Hey again, welcome to another video. Uh, today, I, I'd like to talk about a character in, that you see often in mythology called the trickster. Um, in, the, in a lot of myths and legends, uh, you always, you know, it's pretty clear. You got your good guys, you got your bad guys, but the trickster is interesting. Um, many times they, they, they're more of an, um, uh, an ambiguous, they have more of an ambiguous character. Uh, they kind of sometimes walk, they're generally good, but sometimes they walk the line a little between, between good and evil. Uh, they like to play tricks on people, cause trouble. They're real troublemakers. Um, uh, um, sometimes uh, they tend to usually lean on the side of good, uh, uh, but then every once in a while they could devolve into an actual evil figure. Um, uh, um, however, the interesting thing about tricksters is that because of what they do, they cause changes to happen, uh, many times for good. Um, for example, uh, the first example, for example, is in Greek, Greek mythology. Uh, probably the most famous trickster in Greek mythology is Hermes. Uh, Hermes is the, the, the god of travelers, roads, uh, messengers, mess messages. Um, uh, but however, he is a bit of a troublemaker. He's a bit of a trickster. Uh, for example, not long after he was born, he, uh, he took it in his head to steal the cattle of Apollo. Uh, this made Apollo very, very angry. However, because, uh, Hermes was a very uh, crafty god, he, he was, a, he also invented the very first musical instrument known as the lyre. He uh, took the shell of a tortoise and strung it and was able to play beautiful music and he gave this as a gift to Apollo. And Apollo loved it. Um, he, um, and ever since then, uh, he's been known as the, the god of music, in addition to the god of prophecy and medicine. Uh, maybe he was already known as the god of music, but forever after being given this gift, he uh, he's always seen with his lyre playing beautiful music, and this wouldn't have happened if if Hermes didn't first piss him off. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, on the human side of Greek mythology, there's uh, there's Odysseus from who's the main hero in the Odyssey, and supposedly he was a big fan of Hermes. Uh, and as we know, Odysseus is even though he's a great hero and warrior, he's a bit of a deceitful person in many ways. He's the one that thought up the idea of the Trojan horse, uh, where the heroes hid inside the horse and was pulled into Troy and the heroes snuck out and burned Troy to the ground. That was mostly Odysseus's idea. Um, it, it was a, a neat, a, a mean thing to do, but the downside is the Trojans got destroyed and they lost the war and, uh, and the Greeks won. Uh, uh, Let's see, uh, moving away from Europe and into North America, specifically the, the northwest coast of North America, we have, we have an interesting um, uh, trickster by the name of Raven. Uh, he was uh, worshipped by various North American Indian tribes. And uh, he is actually, he's credited with uh, stealing fire, kind of like Prometheus in Greek mythology, stealing fire and giving it to people. However, one version I'm more familiar with is not so much the stealing of fire, it's letting the sun out. Uh, supposedly there was a chieftain and he had the sun trapped in a box along with the, with the moon and stars. And through trickery, Raven w allowed, uh, was able to free the sun from the box and thus the world can, can, um, can enjoy the benefits of having the sun, uh, even though he had to do it through trickery. Um, Today, uh, oh, actually, there's another interesting story. I, I first came across this story. I'm going to have books in the commentary, but I thought I'd show you one here. I had this book a very long time ago, Myths of Life and Death by Berland. And in this story, I learned about uh, the more sexual side of Raven. Tricksters are interesting. Um, they tend to be a little sexually promiscuous sometimes. Uh, I guess it's the bad boy image, and tricksters are definitely bad boys. Um, uh, there's a story about this uh, this uh, trickster. I mean, Raven fell in love with the with uh, the, the the wife of of a fisherman, and the fisherman, while going out one day, uh, Raven. Uh, went to visit the wife uh, and uh, disguised himself uh, and uh, made love to her. And, uh, and uh, he satisfied her so much that 
the wife, you know, never thought that her own husband was so good in bed. <laughs> uh, unfortunately for Raven, um, the fisherman came home early and uh, gave Raven a good thrashing. Um, again, this is a, a interesting example of, of uh, the trickster kind of getting what he wanted, but getting get, getting a little beat up for it and having to pay for his uh, for his tricks. Um, you know, in Celtic mythology, uh, there's a there's a human that is uh, that's kind of a trickster, which a lot of people don't talk about. His name is Brickru, and in a, a wonderful story called Brickru's Feast, uh, Brickru uh, decides to have a feast, and he invites the Ulstermen to them. And the Ulstermen uh, uh, don't want to go because they know that whenever Brickru tries to have a feast or something, there's going to be trouble. And Brick Crew threatens them uh, by using special words. And in, in Celtic myth, the, the power of words can do all kinds of things. He said, uh, if you don't come to my feast, I'm going to make the right and left breast of every woman fight with each other until there's nothing but moldy flesh. And the Ulstermen say, maybe we should go to the, maybe we should go to the feast. Uh, such a strange threat and uh, really kind of gross in a way. But uh, this is the language. And uh, so they decide to go. And Brick Crew is a troublemaker. So what he does is that before everybody gets to the feast, he tells the three main champions of the Ulstermen, because this is uh, taking place in, in the area of Ireland known as Ulster. He tells, there were three main heroes and he goes to each one of them promising that they would get the hero's portion, which is a, a good cut of the of the of, of the food there uh, that only the best hero gets. He goes to Connell, tells him that. Then he goes to Larry, tells him that. Then he t then he goes to Cahollin and tells him that. So the three heroes think that they're going to get the champion's portion. Uh, uh, and then he goes to the wives of these heroes and tells them, if you're the first to enter my home, you're going to be the most beautiful and the greatest queen of the heroes uh, of, of the Ulstermen. And so next thing you know, the heroes are expecting to be granted the heroes portion. The wives are expecting to enter first into the hall. And this leads to uh, a big fight. And, and Brick was very happy because it kind of led to... Uh, his antics kind of bore fruit, but uh, uh, but the interesting thing is is that uh, the story continues, and it's too much to get into now uh, because it's kind of lengthy. But eventually, uh, this raises the question as to who is the greatest champion of the Ulstermen, and uh, and it turns out after many adventures, Cahullin rises as the greatest. He he passed all the tests, and uh, so due to Brick Crew and his. Uh, his scheming, uh, at least by the end of the story, uh, the good news is we finally have the greatest champion, and that would be Cahollin. Um, so uh, uh, moving on out of Europe and entering into India, um, I would say one of the tricksters of India is uh, would probably be Krishna. Uh, Krishna is, a, is a, uh, an incarnation on earth of the god Vishnu. Uh, Vishnu, whenever there's trouble on earth, he incarnates himself on earth as various avatars. And Krishna is uh, one of his most famous avatars. But when Krishna was very young, he was a, a, a shepherd and he was, uh, again, uh, kind of a troublemaker. Um, he uh, he would tease the, the shepherdesses a lot. They all had a crush on him, you know, but he was a trickster. So he was kind of sexy and good looking and they all had a crush on him and... Uh, and he would tease them by stealing their clothes and hiding up in the tree. And the and the shepherds would come out and say, oh, please give us our clothes back. Uh, one night at a dance, they all wanted to dance with him. So he satisfied them by creating the illusion that they all danced with him at the same time. Uh, so he would do things like that. Um, uh, Later on, Krishna would go about and play an important role in uh, the epic Mahabharata. Uh, and of course, he's the central character in the great uh, gospel of Hinduism, the Bhagavad Gita. Um, moving away from uh, Krishna, um, I want to go back to Europe and get back into Norse mythology. Now, of course, Norse mythology, as everybody knows, the trickster is Loki. Uh, thanks to Marvel and the, adventure, and the Avengers. Um, uh, Loki, uh, Loki started out by uh, creating all kinds of problems for the gods, but sometimes he would get them out of problems too because he was such a crafty god. But uh, this is one of the examples of, of 
a god turning from trickster to turning totally evil when he contrives the death uh, through his machinations, the death of the beloved god Balder. Uh, after the death of Balder, which he caused, there was a great feast by the sea god Agir. And all the gods assembled to this feast, except for Loki. He wasn't invited. But Loki, being Loki, he crashed. He crashed the party. Uh, let's see, I'm missing something here. He, uh, he crashes the party. And uh, in, in, um, in the Poetic Edda, that great book of, of, of poems that tell about the Norse gods, uh, this translation is by uh, Hollander, and it's by Texas. Uh, there's many translations. This is just one of them. Uh, there's a poem called the Locasena, and this is usually translated as the flighting of Loki. Not the flying, the flighting. Now, usually a flighting is a verbal battle, a verbal joust. So who could diss the other person more using eloquence? Uh, I guess you could say this is what some rappers do, you know, by using poetry and rapping, they see who can diss the other one better. Uh, yeah, well, this was an example in Old Norse myth, in Old Norse poetry of, 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 of dissing the other. It's called the flighting. Uh, although in this particular example, it's really one-sided. Loki shows up, he crashes the banquet, and he goes off on the other gods. He humiliates them verbally. He shows up, and the first one to argue against Loki not being there is Bragi, the god of poetry. And Loki tells him, yeah, you're good at poetry, but you're... You're a coward. You're you're you you can't fight for shit. Uh, and then Bragi's wife, Idun, the goddess of spring and the golden apples, she gets mad and tells Loki, "You're crazy. You you, you can't do this. You can't say these things." And Loki tells her that she's kind of a slut, so she can't say anything. Then Freya, the goddess of beauty and uh, and and love uh, she she gets in on the argument and loki says to her you're just a witch well actually actually freya is sort of a witch she's a magic user but i think he means it in the derogatory sense in this case uh, he calls her a witch and he says that she's kind of a slut and she has sex with anything that moves including her own brother frey and not only that but one time when all the gods were together she farted in front of them so this really embarrassed her, and she sat down and shut up. Uh, then along comes Odin, the king of the gods, and he gets in on it, and he, he attacks Loki. And Loki attacks him and says, you like being a woman. And you're like, being a woman? When does Odin, who loves battle, is acts like a woman? Well, apparently in Iceland, there's these different types of magic, and it's believed that some magic is performed by men, some magic is performed only by women. You can call the magic performed by women witchcraft. And supposedly Odin was a, was a magician. He was a great magician. And he performed all kinds of magic, including the magic that women used. So basically Loki is saying that because he practices this type of magic, he's kind of a, a feminine in a way. So this embarrasses Odin. Uh, uh, Frigga, the wife of Odin, then she gets in on it and she tries to argue with Loki, and Loki taunts her, saying, if it wasn't for me, your son would still be alive. And this makes her very, very upset and ashamed. And he would have gone on, except Thor finally shows up, and Loki finally leaves, because you don't want to piss off Thor. He'll kill you very quickly. Uh, so then Loki, uh, Loki runs away, and the gods decide we have to get Loki, and they track him down, and they, they chain him under the earth, uh, and uh, every time he tries to move, uh, he, uh, he causes earthquakes. And, and Ragnarok, at the end of time, uh, Loki will eventually break free and will lead the host uh, of the dead and uh, all the bad guys. And there's going to be a big battle between these guys and the gods and the heroes in Valhalla. So Loki goes from trickster to being kind of... Uh, leader of the uh, leader of the antagonist <laughs> against the gods, um, yeah. So um, I'll tell one more story because I, I haven't covered the continent of Africa. Africa has a lot of tricksters, but one of them is uh, is a trickster by the name of uh, uh, Anansi, 
the spider. Um, there's a lot of stories about him. Uh, one story tells how Anansi uh, was a man at first. And, uh, and what happens is that he was in charge of uh, holding a ram uh, for the king. And, uh, and he winds up killing the ram by accident. But through his trickery, because he doesn't want to get into trouble with the king, he blames somebody else. Well, it turns out uh, uh, it doesn't work. The king and the other guy find out that Anansi is the one that uh, killed the uh, killed killed the ram, and uh, the king got so mad that he kicked Anansi so hard, and Anansi blew into a thousand pieces and became thousands of little spiders that hide in the corner of people's houses to this day. Uh, so that's that's uh, that's just at least one brief story of Anansi, because just 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 to give you an example of of of, of an African of an African story. Um, um, I'll I'll leave you off with just one little interesting conjecture. Uh, it, it, you know, in this book, Myths of Life and Death, I think it was in this book that they talked about the trickster. Notice how all these tricksters are men, male. And in this, I think it was in this book that says emphatically that tricksters are always men. Um, and of course, because of the patriarchal attitude, you know, you wouldn't, you, people, a lot of men who invented these stories probably wouldn't like the idea of women being tricksters, especially the sexual part of women going out there and uh, being, uh, being sexual like these, like these male tricksters are. They tend to have a sexual quality. Um, I don't know if that's true, that there are no women tricksters. I think it would be cool if there are. Uh, I can't think of any. Um, uh, if, if, um, if anybody out there can think of any, you could write in the comments. I'd love to hear it. So until next time.